All right, guys, Grumpy is back. I know it's been a while, but that seems to be my MO. Um, got something special for you today. We're gonna be talking about Graphene OS and how and why I finally made the switch. Now, I know in the last couple of months there's been a lot of deplatforming out there and things going on out there on the internet, but uh, I've been actually wanting to make the switch to Graphene OS probably a couple of years ago but I never really wanted to do it on my main phone because I actually use that phone for a lot of work and I couldn't risk uh, putting graphene on it and then finding out I can't use it. So I finally pulled the trigger, you guys. I went out, I got a um, another Pixel 3a XL device. So now that I had an extra Pixel 3a XL device, I was ready to attempt uh, the install. And everything went okay and we'll get into that a little bit later. But what I wanted to, uh, go through first was uh, what is uh, Graphene OS? Why you should look at possibly installing it for yourself. Um, the main thing here is really this part where it says no uh, Google apps or services. That's the main feature of Graphene OS, much like other other ROMs like Lineage OS and stuff. They don't in include Google Play services and really um, what that means is it doesn't it doesn't have any of the Google sort of uh, tracking, telemetry, location, anything like that. Any of those services that uh, Google installs with Android, I mean yeah, that's the proprietary piece of of Android. Once you strip out all the Google Play services and things. Uh, Google actually puts out uh, open source, uh, the Android open source project, um, which is basically uh, what Graphene is, only they build on top of that open source project to include uh, other things such as uh, hardened security. Like you can go through here on the website. I'm not gonna go through all this for you. It's obvious you can go here and read for yourself. Um, but what the point of the video is, is that I wanted to show you that I was actually able to get everything that I had on my phone reinstalled with graphene and uh, with a, a couple of you know uh, little tweaks here and there not exactly um, the same things I've had installed on my Google phone just uh, uh, I have you have to think about it you have to think about it differently and go about accessing data a different way um, everything is really convenient in uh, and in Android um, you know, the apps that you might install, like Twitter, like your know, Facebook, blah, 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 stuff like that, you know, Gmail. So you, know, you click the app, it's open, it's there, and it's easy for you to use. But at what cost really, right? The cost is basically, you know, you're submitting data to these apps and collecting telemetry off you, location, IP addresses. Uh, they can correlate data with other applications and programs. So you gotta think about it differently. You have to realize that you're gonna sacrifice a bit of convenience in order to get more security and more privacy. The install instructions are actually uh, very good and I didn't have any issues following the instructions on the Graphene OS site. Um, but what you're gonna wanna make sure of is that the prerequisites and the main one here is um, the type of phone that you're using. Uh, under the officially supported devices, um, really, you're gonna wanna use either a Pixel, the Pixel 3 generation or a Pixel 4 generation. So 3, 3XL, 3A, 3A XL, 4, 4XL, and 4A. You can still, and they still have ROMs for Pixel 2, if you got a Pixel 2 you know, hanging around and you want to try to test out putting graphene on, that's great. I don't know if I'd use it for a long-term uh, daily driver just because that uh, those ROMs are, are deprecated and they're not being supported anymore. So you want to go with a Pixel 3 or Pixel 4 device. And I picked up my Pixel 3 AXL um, just used. It's in great shape, actually. Uh, it's in really good shape. So you want to make sure you have a supported phone. That's, that's, the, that's the first thing. Um, the other thing that I'm not too sure of is um, you need to be able to unlock the bootloader on the phone. So I don't know what it's like with uh, different carriers uh, down um, in different parts of the world, but up here in, um, in Canada, this is, a, this is a Rogers based phone, so it's a GSM based phone, and I didn't have any issues uh, unlocking the bootloader. So when you go into the install, you find the prerequisites that you need to go in into system advanced developer options, turn on enable OEM unlocking. Then you enable that feature. And once you're there, 
you need to, uh, depending on what platform you're using in Windows or Linux, you're gonna install some tools, you're gonna, you're gonna download the, um, the ROM, you're going to obviously unlock the bootloader by using this command, uh, unlocking the bootloader on the phone, and then you're gonna download the package, download the image, and you're gonna flash the image using this command, and then you're gonna relock the bootloader at the end. And that's pretty much it, pretty straightforward. This part is easy. The, the part that's more challenging is getting your apps reinstalled. And uh, let me show you sort of my process after installing Graphene OS, what I did for that. The very first thing that I installed once Graphene was up and running is installing F-Droid. For all you that don't know what F-Droid is, it's basically a uh, app, uh, repo well, I guess an app store in a way, uh, but it's it's basically all uh, open source projects and F-Droid does a really good job in reviewing the code before they post anything on their site to make sure that there's you know, it's secure, it's, there's no um, proprietary software. And if, if there is or has the potential to have any, it notifies you in the app that this application might have um, non-free features such as, you know, connecting to private networks or connecting to proprietary networks, things like that. So first thing I did was install F-Droid and um, the Graphene OS comes with its, its, uh, its own browser uh, built in. But once uh, I got F-Droid on there, I started inst uh, trying to install things that I would need sort of immediately. One of those programs was K9. So K9, this is what I'm using for email. And I'll, I'll get into like a live, uh, a live view of my phone, you can see. But this is what I'm using for uh, email, for OTP. So I'm using and OTP for uh, one-time passwords. For podcasting, I am using ANTEN. AntennaPod, AntennaPod here. So if, as a podcasting app, open VPN to connect to uh, network. Yeah, so for maps, I'm using uh, the uh, maps and GPS navigation OSM and plus. New pipe, this is like one of my all favorite all time, all time apps uh, as a YouTube replacement. It's, ten, uh, it's 100 to 1000 times better than the actual YouTube application. C for media. Um, for calendaring, and we'll get into calendar. For connecting calendars um, and syncing them, I'm using this uh, DAVX5, um, but I'm also using this in conjunction with ETAR, which is the open source calendar which gets installed on the device. I also have a Nextcloud. So yeah, anyways, uh, where's just the regular Nextcloud sync client? Anyways, the next cloud sync client. Um, I also installed uh, the Aurora store in here, which is basically another um, app store. You can just download the APK straight from here. And what is it? It's, it's an application store and you can install, you can install applications that you would typically find on the Google Play store. And um, we'll get into that a little bit too, because there's some nuances about the Aurora store as well that you may or may not have uh, difficulty with. Signal, I believe I installed Signal from the Aurora store as well and status, yeah. So this is like a Twitter sort of a client that you can use for a news, handy news reader. So for news and stuff, I'll use that. Uh, Infinity for Reddit for Reddit uh, viewing. Um, another thing that I do have, uh, Bitwarden, I had to, I mean, yeah, I believe I had to add the repository to F-Droid and then I was able to install um, Bitwarden, but I can I can show you that um, in another video in the next video. So right guys, I just want to make this video really quick and short and just to let you know that yes, it is possible to uh, use Graphene OS as a daily driver. Um, some of the benefits you'll see are how quiet your phone is. It my phone like doesn't buzz hardly at all with all these notifications from like you know Twitter. Yeah, uh, I never installed Facebook or anything, but like Twitter, you know YouTube. Um, just random, you know, Google like news things saying, hey, you might like this or hey, look at your life back in 19. And I, like, that's one thing I, I really hated about that uh, Google Photos was like, you know, this day back in 2009, like, I don't want to look at that shit. If I want to look at that shit, I'll look at it on my own. I don't need you poking me. The only thing that I found to be uh, beneficial with the regular Android operating system is the work stuff because the Gmail and the calendar and uh, some of the news feeds and stuff were actually pretty good. Um, so those require a little more 
work on your part in order to get set up. And it's a little more annoying because um, the email doesn't, even though it does have automatic syncing capabilities, it doesn't always work all the time. So anyways, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a follow-up video right after this one on uh, showing you sort of what I have on my device. Actually, hopefully showing you uh, getting Graphene set up on a new device uh, because I'm hoping to do that on my, ex my old 3A XL that now is a spare. All right, guys, I'll talk to you in the next one and, and stay tuned.